you, you said when uh, dealing with everyday items, there is the, the kind of there's a visceral reaction, behavioural and reflective. Um, so first of all, uh, what what's a kind of you know pricey of what each of those reactions are, and um, when encountering a product for the first time, uh, is it a single thing or a combination of all of those states that takes place, and how much has that had to do with the marketing that's led you to that product? I consider myself a, a cognitive scientist, uh, but when I work in design, obviously I'm an applied cognitive scientist. But that means that I take a look and try to understand what the impact is of, uh, of a design upon a person. And I do that both with existing design, but I also do that in the creation of design to understand what impact I'm trying to have. And as a scientist, I know that it's, um, it's not a single thing. The brain is incredibly complex, so there are many, many different stages in the evaluation. So let's take a, I don't know, a, a poster. Make a tip, talk about a poster rather than a website or something else. Um, quite often in a poster, what you'd like to do is attract people's attention. And, they're, and one of the things that's really important is their very first glimpse of it. So in the immediate glimpse, does it attract you? Does it make you interested? Does it then make you want to spend more time looking and reading and seeing what is this? And uh, in my analyses, I've sort of I've simplified the way the brain works, and saying there are three basic stages. The very first one I call visceral, and visceral is automatic. We all have the same mechanism. All of us are born with a visceral stage that works really fast, and it's based on um, very simple principles. It's the sort of thing that protects us, by the way, in the world. And so this is the emotional state. It's really important in keeping us going. It tells us whether something is good or bad, safe or dangerous, whether uh, we should be relaxed or whether we should be kind of tense, be ready to go, or whether maybe not sure what it is. Uh, we tend to like things taste. We like sweet taste. We tend to dislike bitter taste. Now, some of our favorite foods are bitter, but you might remember the first time you tasted coffee or beer, you didn't like it. You had to learn to like it. Uh, now, the same with visual objects. We like bright colors, primary colors, the sort of things children like. We like simple figures, geometric figures. Uh, we like striking contrasts. Uh, we're afraid of heights. Um, we're afraid of dark spaces. We're afraid of, too, of things that are too bright. We're afraid of absolute quiet. We're afraid of very, very noisy things. So we like things kind of in the middle. So, in designing a poster, if you really want someone's attention, you need some striking figures. And actually, that's why color is so important, and that's why balance is so important, and that's why the creation of white space is so important. Because white space creates a contrast between what you're looking at and what, what you want people to look at and the background. And asymmetry is often interesting because it's unsettling. Um, we tend to like symmetrical things, and asymmetrical things are a little bit unsettling, which is good. It attracts attention. Our responses are very fast, they're innate. Um, we can change them, but only slowly and carefully, like we come to like bitter tastes and dissident sounds. But on the whole, all, all around the world, everybody's pretty much the same. Well, that's the immediate reaction. Note that um, if there's something that's visually attractive, professional artist, professional designer, uh, sophisticated viewer, is apt to actually look at it and it, <laughs> you kind of have this notion that if I really like it at first, there's something to matter with it. It's too simple, it's too elementary. Everything is on the surface. Because the visceral judgment is surface judgment. We, we judge people by the clothes they wear, by their hair. And even though we know full well that's not what the person is. So visceral judgments, which are fast, very important, how we buy many things, are surface judgments. They're shallow. Um, automobile designers, by the way, really practice visceral judgments. The styling of an automobile is all about the visceral side, about the appearance. Let me tell you how comfortable the car is, how reliable it is, how effective it is, how it's cost, anything, but it's Boy, you can sometimes see a car and say, I want that. Mm. The 
next side, what I call behavioral. And that's the way a project works and feels. Um, and in, in the case of graphic, in the case of a physical product, it's can I understand it? Can I use it? If I turn this knob, does it feel really, really smooth and elegant and silky? Uh, maybe a little bit of clicks stop so I sort of know where I am. And can I understand and do I not get frustrated and confused? With uh, graphical material is, well, yeah, can I read it? Can I figure out what it's about? Um, I remember I gave a talk once to a group of designers graphical designers, and they had this poster announcing my talk, and I just couldn't believe it. It was this wonderful artistic piece, but I couldn't tell that it was a poster advertising my talk, and it's interesting. I ripped it off the wall, and I took it with me to the talk, and I held it up, and I said, you know, this is a nice piece of art, but how would anybody know that it was me talking and at this time and in this place? Yeah. Um, it was interesting because the, the people in the audience, including the one person who designed it, got very annoyed at my criticism. <laughs> it was beautiful, it was wonderful. Well, there are many dimensions. Viscerally, yes. But in terms of behavior, in terms of saying what this was about, no. It was, just, it was bad. Graphical designers often love the aesthetics, the visceral side. They like to use very small type. And often you like to use light gray type or a dark gray background uh, because it really looks nice. It just can't read it. And so uh, the behavioral side is really also important. You don't want to lose the visceral beauty, but you have to make it uh, so effective. Now, after the behavioral side is slower than the visceral. And even slower is what I call the last stage, which is conscious, where you think about it, you reflect on it. And I call that the reflective side. And that's where you think back about the experience. Uh, or maybe you think forward to something you're expecting to happen tomorrow. So, um, that gives rise to a whole different set of emotions. Reflective, those are much more complex because we assign agency. So, for example, guilt is I did something bad. Uh, blame is you did something bad. So it's the very same act, but if I believe it was you, blame. If I believe it's me, it could be kept. And the same with praise and pride. Praise is you did something great, pride is I did something great. So you have agency. And this takes a much longer time and actually tends to be inaccurate. Um, probably all of us have experienced thinking about some event in the past and going on and on and on and inventing scenarios and we get really angry or maybe really pleased on the basis of nothing but our imagination. 